On September 26, 1991, 10 players were chosen to represent their country in the 1992 Olympics. Together, they form the greatest team of all time and have come to be known as the Dream Team. This is a dream come true for me, just to be selected to the Dream Team. This is a team that, you know, everyone would dream of playing on and dream of seeing. I think it's the biggest honor for me to be asked to play on the Olympic team. You know, I can't wait for it to come. It's an opportunity for me to make history. Not often in your lifetime you get a chance to make history. Americans are very proud to be considered the, the basketball country. And I think it's up to us now to go over and show the rest of the world that we are number one in basketball. So many times America has watched us battle each other. And now they won't have to do that anymore. They're, hey, we're pulling for our boys. Growing up, you see the players standing up on that platform and watching the flag being raised up and the national anthem being played. And, uh, anybody that doesn't dream that someday that could happen to them uh, isn't paying very close attention because it's a thrill. Though the story of this team starts in 1991, in some ways it dates back to 1979 when two charismatic rookies began to change basketball forever. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird have come to personify so many aspects of the game they play, but having carried their teams to eight world championships between them, perhaps it is their leadership that defines them best. And even in building a team of stars, one must begin with its leaders. Perhaps more than any other athlete, Magic Johnson fits the old adage that some men are born to greatness. I could just see him when he was a little kid. You see, somebody stuck a basketball in his hands and his, his eyes just got big and that smile came across his face and away he went from that point in time. As a teenager, he was a playground prodigy. I told all my friends that I had a kid coming in here that would make them forget about every other basketball player in the area or maybe they ever saw it. He didn't disappoint his coach as he took Everett High School to the state title and he wasn't stopping there. Any questions before I get signed? Just one question. No, uh, next year I will be uh, attending Michigan State University. It took him only two years to reach the pinnacle of the college game. Look at Urban Magic Johnson. Michigan State University. National champions, 1979. And only one year later, he would conquer the NBA young man by the name of Magic Johnson is going to start at center. Here comes the 20-year-old rookie down the middle. Dawkins went to him and scored the Sunday to the line. Is he unbelievable? There it is. It's over. And the most valuable player is Magic Johnson. He starts at center, plays forward and guard, and leads the Los Angeles Lakers to a world championship once. In four whirlwind years, Magic had won a high school, college, and NBA title. And somehow, that was only the beginning. He would go on to collect four more NBA championships, and with a unique combination of style and vision, he would revolutionize the game. Magic Johnson, and only he, only he could have done that. I tell you, nobody does it. But the secret of his success was about far more than his unique abilities. Magic Johnson was born to be great, but he was also born to be a leader. And the ways in which he led were as varied as the challenges that he faced. In 1979-80, when Irvin came to the Lakers, we had a very business-like team. Our guys came in, punched the clock, 
you know, played the game with very little emotion. Uh, then all of a sudden this kid came in and things changed forever. He's very, um, I, I think, much like a big brother, you know, to a lot of the guys on the team. And we just all just followed in his footsteps. Now look at Magic. <laughs> he won't let him up. Whenever anything arose at that time, he was always there to take care of things. That magic is saying, calm down, calm down. He makes you believe that uh, he's going to win and he's going to pull you along with him. He is in charge out there. He's the general. He's our General Schwarzkopf. You know, he's, he uh, tells everybody where to go, what to do. He settles people down. He keeps everything poised and the things get tight. There's no better, no better leader probably in the history of sports than him. Four seconds, three. Got to do something, Mads. 15 points. I've always led, and I've never followed. When Magic led his Lakers to the top of the NBA, the team that he found waiting there to meet him was the Boston Celtics. Their star, Larry Bird, had shown his own leadership abilities by reviving Boston's hallowed basketball tradition. Two seconds left. The bullets by a one. Aims to Bird. He gets a good shot in the shoulder. It's winner. Incredible. There's nobody better with a game on the line. Maybe nobody better ever in this league. Although he would ultimately take his place with Magic as one of basketball's greatest leaders, his road to success was very different from that of his rival. Born in a small town in Indiana, he faced a life of hard work and modest means. Around here, you, you learn to play uh, by yourself or with a friend. And if you're going to make anything of yourself, you've got to do it on your own. Laboring long hours to hone his skills, Bird managed to attract some college scouts to his tiny high school and, against the odds, earned the last scholarship to prestigious Indiana University. But only 24 days into his freshman year, his basketball dream seemingly came to an end as he dropped out and hitchhiked home. I think that the size of the school and not having a lot or coming from a lot, I think he just got a little discouraged and a little depressed and bailed out without really consulting anyone. The story of Larry Bird seemed to end before it had begun. But two years later, he would resurface at little-known Indiana State University, where he would again defy the odds and lead the Sycamores to the NCAA championship game. It's destiny for these guys, Jimmy. Suddenly, Larry Bird was a basketball miracle boy, an NBA first-round pick, and the would-be savior of the struggling Boston Celtics. But to outward appearances, this gangly country boy seemed an unlikely choice of hero. I was just a kid. I mean, he doesn't look all that good. You know, and uh, there's talk about how slow he was. He couldn't jump. He couldn't defend. But Larry Bird was accustomed to meeting challenges. He was the most self-motivated player I ever saw. Hale charge for it. He goes down. Larry Bird goes for a loose ball and gets it to McHale. Here's a guy diving after loose balls. He can't run fast. In fact, he's slow. That is out of play. Look out, Bird's in the crowd. He'll throw that after the, uh, the big offensive rebound and put it back in. He can't jump. Relying on an endless well of determination, Bird developed a command of the game that went far beyond his physical skills. Larry Bird, the runner. Walk it down. Bird over the shoulder. He's for two and a foul. Oh, that fake. Oh, boy, what a play. Great pass for Kale for two. Oh, what a pass for Bird. Bird steals it. See it coming, and look at the pass to McHale. This is the DJ baseline jumper. Oh. Won't go again. Look at Bird go down with the ball. Oh, what a play! What a play! 
looks like um, a guy who would pick a, a, a locomotive up and, and uh, with ropes, pull a locomotive. He, he, he'll endure anything to win. Larry tries to fight his way through with Barkley all over. They're not going to call a foul. He goes to Bird. He's open. Got it. At the buzzer. Infused with Bird's indomitable will to win, his Celtics have collected three championships and taken their place as one of history's greatest teams. And as long as he's on the court, they remain a team to be feared. Three-point, Portland lead. All right, here's Bird. Let's go over, he fires. It's a three-pointer, and he's tied the game. He's a leader. He is a leader in the Celtics, and he will be until he retires. In winning eight championships between them, Magic and Bird have both had premier big men to team with. As part of the dream team, they will again have two dominating centers to complement. They are each a devastating force. So what chance does an opponent have of stopping them together? <laughs> Patrick Ewing and David Robinson are accustomed to taking charge in the middle. Both are capable of dominating the paint, and now they're looking forward to sharing it. It's going to be tremendous. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's anybody in the international competition that's really going to be able to stop him. <laughs> there's nobody in the NBA that really stops him. Ewing off the spin. Oh. He's a, a tremendous post player. Ewing over Robinson, yes. Patrick Ewing is on fire. He has... Like myself, he's very quick and very agile. You know, he has that spin move that he's perfected. And he's so tall and he's a great shot blocker. Highlight film rejection, David Robinson. Only these two titans can match each other's prowess. He gives me problems just as much as I give him problems. I'm not sure that Patrick Ewing ever faced a man with this man's quickness. You cannot deal with the Admiral better than Patrick Ewing. He'll fake, he'll drive. He's there for the lamp. Good, what a great move. But the problems they present for each other will pale in comparison to those that they will have in store for their competition. Between us, well, it'll be intimidating, I think, for anybody. It's got to be. For these men not only share enormous talent, but the spirit of a warrior. I try to uh, dunk it as hard as possible. So um, the next time I go to dunk it, the thing first before they'll try to block it. <laughs> Robinson, too much on his hook, and Smith there throws it away. Robinson makes sure this time. You're coming down on a fast break and you just rise up over someone and then you dunk it. That's the most incredible feeling you could imagine. Everybody just is going crazy and you just feel like you say, ah, so good. These fierce rivals form the most intimidating of tandems. And together, they are ready to take on the world. When conjuring up images of the dream team, one thinks of precision plays executed with effortless grace. But there is one member of this team who takes a different approach to the game. For opponent, Charles Barkley is their worst nightmare. I'm a bad dog. Charles split the defenders and rips it. I feel a high level of intensity. Oh, he's handled by Barkley really high. And Charles just in ecstasy. Charles Barkley is an emotional volcano who thrives while wreaking havoc on the hardwood. He plays with you mentally, he hits you and, and look at you crazy and, and make you wonder what he's thinking. He's an extraordinary talent, but he's, you know, he's just kind of crazy. It took me a while 
to get used to him. But when you take a closer look, it becomes clear that there is a method to Barkley's madness. I work hard than anybody there is. I mean, there may be people who work just as hard, but nobody works harder than I do. Standing just over six feet, four inches tall, he's had to. Not blessed with the classic basketball body, Barkley has used his fiery intensity to develop a unique combination of physical skills that has changed all the rules. He uses his gift very well, and he plays, he plays the game a little different from everybody. Five boards for Cliff Robinson. Whoops. The sucker play by Barkley. Does it work? Yes! Oh, Phenomenal. Almost like a freak, what he's able to do. You're not supposed to be able to do what Charles does. Barkley with a nice pass behind the pack. When Charles want to, he can do whatever he want to out there. There's Williams again. Bowl taps it once and can't make it. Charles looks like he's just determined to take over this game. I always consider Charles Barkley one of the top five players in the league. He rebounds, he blocks shots, he scores, he passes the ball. Complete game. They battled into overtime. Albert King, Barkley for three! Oh, no! But even more than the impressive array of weapons that he commands, it is Barkley's competitive fire that makes him one of the NBA's ultimate warriors. He gives you that raw ability that don't quit attitude and hate to lose attitude and, and will die for the game of basketball. The only thing that matters is winning when you're playing basketball out there. I mean, then I'll do whatever it takes to win. So while Barkley may seem different than his Olympic teammates, he has merely taken another path toward the same goal and in the process, redefined the image of superstar. God gave me a good package. I can play power or I can play quickness. And depending on the individual I'm playing against, I'm able to adjust. But I think my on-court personality has gotten me to where I am today. Sixers will set up for the final shot. A.C. Green and Charles Barkley. Charles with Green. Yes, sir. Score it. Score it. Great drive by Barkley. This unparalleled group of superstars differ not only in their approach, but also in their personalities. And no two players illustrate that better than Carl Malone and John Stockton. John Stockton of the Utah Jazz is one of the game's best pure point guards. That's the new record, John Stockton, the most assist ever. And his teammate Carl Malone is the prototypical power forward. But this duo is also one of sports' most striking odd couples. When you look at John Stockton and you look at Carl Malone, you're looking at two different phases of the game. One is the artist, the finesse, the Joe Montana, and that's Stockton. He has the imagination. It's a, it's, for him, it's a dance. It's, a, it's an art. On the other hand, the other guy's in the trenches. Uh, he's banging. He's hitting. He's using his physical strength. But their differences extend further than just their style of play. In contrast to the overpowering Malone, John Stockton looks and acts more like the boy next door than an NBA superstar. You can go out there and you can act, or you can go out there and play. I'm just out there playing, and uh, if I give off some sort of impression, then it's, it's unintentional. It's just, I guess it's just how I am. On a team filled with imposing figures and brash personalities, a guy like Stockton could easily get lost in the shuffle. Probably if you was picking a, a team, you know, just send a lot of basketball, if you would probably overlook him if you didn't know who he was, because uh, he couldn't play or whatever. But no one could ever overlook Carl Malone with his incredible physique and constant animation. He is always the center of attention. Get to back, drive, pay, score. He gets very excited, and, and he does his little things out of excitement rather than planned uh, showmanship. I just have fun when I go out there, and that's, that's what I like. However, as different as they are off the court, 
once they step on it, they're perfectly in sync. By Eaton, stocked into the low. Drive the alley, dish it to Carmelo, slam dunk. With John Stockton the ideal setup man and Carl Malone the ultimate finisher, they form an unstoppable combination. Stockton to Malone. How many times have I said that in the last one? That's deja vu. Perfectly complementing each other, these two different people have developed a keen appreciation of each other. A lot of things we do together is because Carl works as hard as he does. I mean, even if he gets the rebound, he's gonna he's gonna fill a lane for you. And I like to know he's there. I know he's there, and you can count on him being in the area. Stockton finds his meal ticket. Oh! It's a reward like thing, you know. If if your puppy bring you the newspaper, you're gonna give him a treat, so to speak. If you get the rebound and you give the Stockton and Bush here behind to get to court, it's just his way of giving it back to you. The only thing that Stockton and Malone do better than flatter each other is flatten opponents. A two-headed monster, they leave crushed defenders in their wake. Go bounce it to the middle. Oh, hammered up in your face, Mama. On the floor, that suddenly that combination becomes uh, maybe the best in the history of the NBA is a one-two punch. This team also packs a different kind of one-two punch. They are not teammates, but they do share a special versatility that sets them apart. And a determination that has allowed them both to overcome adversity and achieve stardom. Hardaway gets it to Mullen, three-point country. He's made all four that he's tried out there tonight. He dribbles, he stops, he shoots over Magic from 21 and hits another one. Mullen, the greatest outside shooting exhibition I've seen in years, maybe ever. Chris Mullen is one of the finest basketball players in the world. But to fully appreciate his greatness, one must first learn of his journey. Growing up in Brooklyn, New York, Chris Mullen was a boy with a dream. All my life, that's all I ever wanted to be was an NBA basketball player. You would always see him running down the uh, avenue, or you'd see him uh, uh, going to play at odd times. He had a key to his grammar school gym and a key to his high school gym. He just spent an enormous amount of time trying to improve his game. Chris's practice paid off. He was a high school and a college All-American, an Olympic gold medal winner, and finally, the number one draft pick of the Golden State Warriors. You know, I thought that was the greatest thing. I'm coming out to California, you know, make good money, hang out, you know. Mullen was being hailed as one of the NBA's hottest young stars. His life was beginning to change. I always would put um, other things behind basketball and working out. That was always my priority. Little by little, the tables were being turned, you know. Once in a while, I'd let, say, I'm not going to work out tonight. I'll just go out and hang out. To the point where I was really, you know, get out of shape, and then you don't feel like playing because, you know, you know it's going to hurt, you know, and so, Going out on the court became a chore. He was overweight. Uh, he was late for almost everything. And it manifested itself really in, in his preparation. He wasn't prepared to play physically or mentally. And I always had um, good direction since I was a kid. Early in my NBA career, you know, I, I got sidetracked and kind of got away from what was, was being good to me. During his third disappointing season in the league, Chris Mullen checked into an alcohol rehabilitation center. Maybe that's what I needed to, uh, to wake myself up. Here's Chris Mullen making his first appearance of the game at Obama. 48 days later, Chris returned. He had a new start and his old attitude. The one reason that I became a good basketball player was my work ethic. After I went through alcohol rehab, I'm just back to the way Chris has always been, the way I've always been, and things have turned around. It's stolen by Mullen. He leaves Skiles in the dust. He hurdles over Kite and puts it there. What he's done to this franchise is he's created a, a work level unprecedented in sports. Nearly stolen by Mullen, disrupting things, stolen out of the head. Less than a second, go! Once again, approaching the game with a consuming passion, Mullen has become the superstar 
that he always seemed destined to be. Mullen, through the leg, through McDaniel, through the hoop. The Warriors down two points. Here goes Mullen, draws the crowd all the way to the basket, got it! What a remarkable play by Mullen! For Mullen, having been named to the Olympic team is an accomplishment of special triumph and perspective. I set a goal, and I get there, and I knock it down, then I move it ahead. So now I just keep looking ahead. There's no, there's no finish line. Like Mullen, Scotty Pippen of the Chicago Bulls sees no limit to what he can achieve. A multi-talented athlete entering his prime, he is overflowing with confidence. Be intimidated by anybody. Scotty Pippen works in for the right side. What a dunk! <laughs> you gotta force the game where you put fear in other guys' hard and just go at them. Pippen on the drive, left of the lane to the rack. Whoa! Scotty Pippen! But Pippen didn't always see his name in light. Having played only one year of high school basketball, he wound up playing his college ball in obscurity at Central Arkansas. A virtual unknown, he caught the attention of pro scouts at senior all-star games, and his NBA story had begun. Scott Pippen of Central Arkansas. That's right, folks. You probably have never heard of Scotty Pippen. You know, after I was drafted there, you know, and now Horace Grant, one of my teammates, say, uh, I heard him call your name, and I was like, what? Who is Scotty Pippen, you know? I laughed, and I, and I joked, but... Uh... He got selected ahead of me, so I guess he got the last laugh. But Scotty's laughter soon faded. As a rookie, you know, he got frustrated a lot, and he was immature, and, you know, as all rookies are. But with time, Pippen began to realize his great potential. It has been the Scotty Pippen show so far in this game for the Bulls. You could see greatness in this young man uh, with his physical ability, but also uh, the tenacity with which he played, and you could see him just getting bigger and stronger. On a purely physical level, Scotty was blossoming, but he would learn, courtesy of the Detroit Pistons, that in the NBA, mental toughness is what separates good players from great ones. Oh, look at the block by Rodman. The reaction, Pippen lost his cool for a moment. The Pistons return to the NBA Finals for the third straight time. But in the 1991 playoffs, Pippen would show Detroit and the world that he had come of age. No matter what they did or what they tried to do to frustrate me or take me out of the game, that you know I would get up and shake it off. I just kept giving all I had, and I, I knew before long that you know they would have to accept the beating that we was given. Wire with Paxson and Pippen racing down. In the championship series, he would face the final test of his newfound start. Well, notice the matchup with Pippen on Magic, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, able to bump, be physical with Magic, knock him out a little bit further. Playing Magic to a standstill, Pippen helped the Bulls capture their first title, and his long road to the top of the NBA was complete. Pippen fakes, now drives the baseline. He But even after being chosen as one of the 10 best players in the world, Pippen remains hungry for more. I try to learn the game by how I play on the floor, by how I perform, and I just try to keep building from that. This guy's the limit for the, the, the young guy. Two seconds, one second. There is one final player without which no dream team would be complete. He is perhaps the most spectacular performer ever to play the game. He has amazed and astonished, and for a moment, Michael Jordan can make us believe that there is nothing that he cannot do. Get up! Get up! Jordan on the drive. All the way to the rack. Oh, Possessing an unbelievable array of offensive weapons, Jordan is virtually unstoppable. Oh, what a move! 
His performances mesmerize all who watch him. He's a pro's pro. I mean, we even like to see him play when we're not playing against him. You watch him, and he do something, and you be like, Jordan, quick right, go left to the base, he's inside. Reverse layup, what a move! I wish he could do that again. I pass to Michael, reverse! Oh, yeah! If he came on once a week like the Cosby Show, I sit there and watch. <laughs> Jordan has clearly established himself as one of history's greatest offensive players. 63 for Jordan, a new NBA record has been set in the Boston Garden. But he's far more than just a sensational scorer. He plays to win. He just doesn't play to do all the fancy things. His scoring is the most notable thing about him, but he does so many other things to make it seem better. He dominates the game on the offensive end of the court, but he also dominates the game on the defensive end of the court. And that takes more away from the other team's confidence than anything that he can do offensively. You become consumed by Michael Jordan. You become consumed that he's out there. At times, Jordan seems capable of single-handedly shutting down the opposition. You know, he goes inside the phone booth and puts on his Superman suit, and, you know, he's everywhere. Jordan's incredible collection of skills seems to know no bounds. That's a Magic Johnson pass. People always talk about uh, Magic Johnson's passing ability and they always talk about Larry Bird's passing ability. But it's rarely people really recognize Michael Jordan for the exceptional passer that he is. In years past, Jordan's aerial acrobatics seemed to overshadow his other abilities. But now he has come to be recognized as one of the game's most complete players. Jordan on the drive, comes back in the lane, off to Pippen, Scotty inside for the third. Oh! Jordan's so unselfish, he finds the open man. Sometimes you get caught up in watching Michael floating through the air, and you forget he passes just as much as he shoots. But people see the shots, they don't see the assists. He's just an all-around player. He doesn't care. Oh, he just wants to win. He just wants to win. He'll do anything he can to win a basketball game. He can't be judged by the points he scores. You know, he can score at will, pretty much. You know, he's been scoring champ. He's been defensive player of the year. He's been dunk champ. He's been everything. He wants to win. In transforming the Bulls into champions, Jordan has reaffirmed his unselfishness, proving that above all, he's willing to do anything to win. The Bulls have won it! I've been able to change my game, and Michael Jordan has emerged as a player, able to, to know what to give as a player, as a person, to get to another level. It is this selfless attitude that binds together the 10 members of the Dream Team. 10 individual superstars committed to achieve a common goal and a team that has stirred the imagination like no other before it. Johnson always seems to take over, and there's a big three-point.